Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Encouraging Word. My name is Jeremy Henderson, and I'm the pastor of the Butler Church of the Nazarene. I'm also blessed to be able to bring you an encouraging word from God's Word, the Bible, each week. Now today, we're going to continue a series that we started last week, and it's based out of Paul's instructions in Colossians chapter 3. Paul shares that we are to put on the new self, since we've taken off the old self with its sinful practices. And uh, the way that Paul speaks in chapter 3, it kind of reminds me of a person changing clothes. So we're taking off the stained, dirty garments of sin, and we are putting on the new garments of Christ's righteousness that have been given to us through what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So Paul's metaphor is kind of helpful in that it helps us to see that the way we live our lives in Christ is kind of like two halves of the same coin. So we reject sinful practices, which is the first side of the coin, and we embrace that which draws us near to Jesus, which is the other side of the coin. Now, last week, we learned that this is descriptive of the life and process of sanctification in our lives. That is, it's God's work in us that conforms our character to His. But it's also a work that we have a part to play in. And so, Paul, the Apostle, he helps us to identify several garments, so to speak, that we should put on as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. So, last week we looked at the garments of compassion and kindness. Today, we're going to look at the garments of humility and gentleness. So, let's start with humility. This is actually a garment that seems to be at odds with all of the trends of the world. And I believe it's safe to say that even among Christ followers, this is a garment that oftentimes doesn't seem to wear well. And I believe that because, well, we actually have a hard time understanding what humility really is. Humility is not some sort of cringing, self-abasement, um, not thinking that you're any good at anything or adopting a mindset or a posture that says, well, I, I'm not beautiful or I have no strengths. Really, that sort of a mindset and a posture is actually at odds with what God teaches us in other parts of Scripture. So it leaves us wondering, what really is humility? Um, you know, I really enjoy what C.S. Lewis had to say about humility. He said that humility was not thinking less of ourselves. It was just thinking of ourselves less. I know you can kind of get the idea. But I also think that humility is the condition of the human heart when it recognizes what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. Humility can also be a posture of the heart when it comes to terms with ourselves, our status in life, our place within the family of God. You know, the Apostle Paul, he helps us to understand this mindset in 1 Corinthians 4 when he asks, what do you have that you did not receive? And the most truthful answer in the world that we can give is nothing. See, God has blessed us with all things. So, Paul asks, if you've received it, why do you boast as if you did not? You know, pride in the life of a follower of Jesus is ridiculous. Because it is God who has saved us not because of any good thing that we have done or anything in and of ourselves, but God has saved us because of His mercy. See, it is God who has given us our spiritual gifts and gifts 
of material provision. And these not for our glory, but that we might glorify him. And if the eternal son Jesus did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself in order to serve and to save us, what right do we have to not serve others? You see, building ourselves up with the gifts that God has given us instead of using them to honor him and serve others, it's about as presumptuous as a salesman trying to sell you a car that you already own. So the follower of Jesus is humble, not thinking less of themselves, just thinking of themselves less. And the follower of Jesus is also gentle. That's the second garment that I want us to talk about today. Some versions of the Bible translate gentleness as meekness. And here again is another phrase, term, description that we really don't take very kindly to in our society because we are taught to be rough and tough from a very early age. We are taught to downplay our weaknesses. And goodness sakes, meek even rhymes with weak, so surely that must be what meekness really means, right? Wrong. You see, gentleness and meekness have nothing to do with a lack of courage or lack of strength. You see, the meek person doesn't bow down before every breeze. The gentle person is not spineless. Actually, the meek or gentle person is the one who is self-controlled because they are actually God-controlled. They can and they will be direct at times, assertive at times, and firm in their convictions, but all of it in a godly way and done so at a fitting time. Meekness or gentleness is an overflow of the heart that is tender before God. It is a heart that is humble before people. You see, Christians with such a heart, they will treat others gently, even when they're reviled, even when they're persecuted against, showing others the grace and the mercy that God has shown to them. And in doing so, they will follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who, when he was mocked, ridiculed, and beaten, he uttered no threats, he offered no blows in retaliation. Instead, he endured the cross, and he scorned its shame, and in humility and meekness, he died the death that we deserved. The hymn writer states it quite well, Thy foes might hate, despise, revile. Thy friends unfaithful prove, unwearied in forgiveness still. Thy heart could only love. O oh, give us hearts to love like thee, like thee, O oh Lord, to give far more for others' sins than all the wrongs that we receive. One with thyself, May every eye in us, thy brethren, see the gentleness and grace that spring forth from union, Lord, with thee. Well, with that, we'll call it a day. And I pray that we will all be able to put on the garments of Christ's humility and gentleness. Friends, if you don't have a church that you regularly attend, I'd love to have you join me at Butler Church of the Nazarene. Our Sunday morning worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. and we are located at 110 West Nursery Street right here in Butler, Missouri. I know that if you come, you'll discover a place and a group of people where you know that you belong. If you're unable to be with us on site, I'd like to invite you to join us and check out our Facebook live stream of our service, or to go to our YouTube channel where you can also view the live stream of our Sunday morning worship service. 
God bless you all. Remember, God loves you and you belong at Butler Church of the Nazarene. Have a fantastic rest of your week.